Okay, welcome back to the third part in this series of, of making these um, dungeon tiles. Um, so first off, I'm just going to start off by making some 4x4 um, four four inch grids. Um, <clears throat> and I like this kind of X-Acto knife. Um, this is just like one of those uh, kind of carpet knife, um, X-Acto knives. And this is an X-Acto. Um, it's that's one of those things where people are like that's not an exacto that's a carpet knife this is an exacto brand knife and then what people think of as an exacto is actually a scalpel but uh, I like to use this kind of um, exacto knife and I'm just kind of coming in and like chewing up my corners and stuff and uh, it doesn't need to be too too exact I mean I am gonna totally destroy the tops of them anyways making um, texture so but I'm gonna start off with the four by four inch grid so I go in and I, I clean everything up <clears throat> and then you can see that I uh, I'm gonna switch to a, a scalpel type exacto and then I'm gonna go in and make um, four by four inch um, grid lines and this is the only piece where I'm actually gonna do that where I'm actually gonna measure out the uh, the four by four grid and there's a reason why I'm doing that. Um, there are some games that I play where you want to have that four by four inch grid, like in um, Descent. Uh, Descent is really important when you use the, um, the board because uh, of, of how the pieces move. Um, my new favorite dungeon crawler though, board game, is uh, Massive Darkness. And that makes, it makes no difference, Massive Darkness, because uh, you move um, zone to zone. And then, you know, just the mobs and the, the heroes, they can, they move um, zone to zone, which might be like a whole 4x4 four four tile or like a corridor, something like this. And then you just pile in enemies. But this is, this is also for the 4x4 four four inch um, purists. But I do really like how this, this guy looks, how, how this came out. I will say that the measuring out the 4x4 four four grid takes a lot longer. Um, you can see how I kind of speed up the process a lot, making the, um, the flagstone tiles. Just for one thing, I, I measure by taking the back of the, my 4x4 four four, um, uh, molded piece and then just putting on the back and then tracing that out and then doing some freehand uh, drawing on top of that. And but So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in and I'm going to take the uh, the tops off of these um, my 4x4 four four inch grids and I'm cutting almost all the way down to the other side of the foam core um, and the reason why is because uh, I'm going to go in later and I'm going to glue something to the other side so that's going to keep it um, keep it safe and um, <clears throat> but also I want to uh, peel off the tops of them to get that stone texture and you'll notice that I'm leaving some of the paper on there. I am peeling off a lot of the paper, but I'm leaving some of the paper on to kind of break up the um, same sameness of the texture. And I want to get that interesting looking kind of like a uh, flagstone uh, texture. And then I'm gonna paint over the top of that with a um, with something. Oh, 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 I cover that later. I'll, I'll, I'll show you, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But right now I'm just kind of uh, breaking up, making some texture with my thumb and the X-Acto, um, just kind of going in and you know, breaking up the, um, the the same sameness. I'm sure there's a technical word for that, but I'm just kind of breaking up, trying to create some texture, uh, which is going to be a good foundation for later when I paint it and flock it and do you know uh, whatever else. To it. it's just going to add to another uh, dimension of um, realism. So, but yeah, to just to get that um, texture, I'm just I'm just going in and I'm kind of roughing it up, um, kind of weathering the stones, um, <clears throat> and also I'm going to go in uh, a little bit later and I'm going to take a tin foil ball and then I'm going to roll it over the um, the tops of the pieces to add more texture, and that's that's kind of a recurring theme here. You're just going to see me going in and doing 
one layer on top of another layer on top of another thing that'll just kind of add some little elements of um, of realism like this is the, this is the foundation and then the painting is really going to sell it um, <clears throat> but I do really like how this looks oh and so also I'm going in with the edges I'm just taking a, a, a ballpoint pen going around the edges and then kind of redefining some of the, uh, the shapes of, of where the weathering would happen in between the stones and um, I saw another method I might try this later I haven't tried it yet where you take a heat gun and then blast the tops of the pieces with the heat gun and then it kind of melts those spots where you cut in like if you use an exacto or something like that um, I might experiment with that later but here's the um, here's the tin foil ball just kind of rolling it over the top of it to get that nice stone texture and then breaking up the surface creating some areas that are more uh, pushed in than others and I think I am going over the edges more than I am on the tops to kind of give it more of that weathered um, look around the edges and then you know breaking things up with the exacto too but I, but these these do look cool I, I like how they look so for this next part um, we're gonna do some uh, like kind of sand texture um, and you could use uh, stuff like this a lot of people like to use um, this stuff it's just like drywall filler um, but what I'm gonna use is um, this stuff and this is um, it's the golden makes high quality acrylic paints and uh, this is just a, uh, a mixed media it's pumice that's mixed into acrylic media so instead of paint they've just taken like really really fine granules of, of sand and they mix it into their medium so this is going to do all in one step of say uh, uh, putting in filler and also sealing it with something like Mod Podge or something like that. So I'm just going to paint over it with this stuff using a, uh, a crappy brush. The only other thing that I'm doing here is uh, going over the tops of the pieces with some water to kind of smooth out the top so that I don't have brush strokes on the very tops of the pieces. So what I'm going to do now is uh, after the piece is dried, and you can see it's got like a, it does have a really nice uh, stone texture. The, the pumice really adds another element of uh, realism, kind of. And I am leaving these on too to get that kind of cool um, flagstone effect. And then it helps to texture these too so it doesn't just have like a flat kind of uh, construction paper texture. And then it goes into the cracks like a, like a mortar would too. But I'm going to come back in and I'm going to do um, another coat. And also this is the time to kind of come by uh, and take a look and see if there's any things that you know are offensive to you, any things that you want to fix. Um, like I'm going to reseal the sides of these. Um, but I'm also just looking to see if there's anything like sticking out any any uh, little stones that I just I want to fix because you can definitely do that at this stage I still um, fix things but I'm actually I'm gonna come back in and I'm not worried about sealing it this time I'm just gonna add some um, some more uh, texture and I don't uh, again I, I want to go back over it and smooth it so that I don't get um, brush strokes but um, I'm not worried about uh, 
getting total coverage this time. I'm just kind of coming back and, and doing um, more texture. Just doing a second pass. And I'm just brushing it straight on and then kind of thinning it uh, as I go with, uh, with a little bit of water just to kind of get rid of the, um, the brush marks. But it's also going to add some more, um, some more texture. So I just have my uh, my test piece here that I'm using for reference, but uh, you know it's like just basically drawing in some stones. Some of them I'm gonna make big, some of them I'm gonna make a little smaller. But don't worry about the uh, spaces in between because um, we're gonna fill that up with. Uh, Don't think um, dungeon, think uh, garden, like you're gonna take a little walk in a, um, in like a garden or something, you have little pieces of grass kind of creeping up in between the stones. <laughs> Now I'm going to come in with the X-Acto. This, I didn't mean to grab this guy, but I did by accident, and then, but I am going to use it. Um, this is just, this is a special kind of X-Acto, and it has a swivel blade on the top. I um, can't remember how much I paid for this. I got it because I was doing some stuff with stencils, and I thought it was worth it to save my wrists. Um, but it is, it is kind of nice for stuff like this, because it just kind of, automatically swivels while you're cutting. I have a, an exacto collection. One thing about doing this, try and cut down and towards yourself, because that's a natural motion. Doing this is not, and it hurts your wrist.
so I was doing my um, uh, Black Friday like Cyber Monday shopping on Amazon and uh, I found um, a, this guy who does woodworking stuff and he had just a ton of like little cutoffs in a box for like $30 and I measured these and using the, um, the open lock stuff like if I wanted to have the, um, the open lock pieces kind of butt up against my foam core pieces if I slice them off on the bottom the way I wanted them to um, <clears throat> then they still fit pretty good that's like that's pretty pretty great right there how they fit together and then um, so I have you know the, these are these are the open lock the open forge pieces this is this is um, Rampage um, and they uh, from uh, printable scenery um, but as you can see they all kind of they you know they uh, can butt up against each other and so I think that's what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna um, <clears throat> use the, the MDF and then glue these pieces to the MDF and and use those as uh, as tiles so I'll, I'll post a link to where I got those. I think I paid like $30 for a huge box of MDF cutoffs. Um, and I, I'm also a fine art painter and I, I use the, I, I paint on MDF. I'll, I'll um, put gesso on panels and paint on that. So I'll use the, uh, the other cutoffs that are different sizes, but these four by fours are really perfect. And then there's a bunch of smaller ones too. Um, but I'll, I'll get on with the, uh, the painting. I'll show you how I painted these to get them to have that kind of realistic looking stone look. <clears throat> so before I start painting, <clears throat> I'm going to give these guys a, a pretty good coat of um, some craft glue. Um, this is uh, Eileen's um, tacky glue. It's just a really strong uh, PVA, you know, sticky um, uh, craft glue. But it's basically, it's just, it's Elmer's, it's just like way stronger um, PDA. Uh, it's, PDA is like the same stuff as wood glue, it's the stuff that they use in book binding. And it, um, it works really good on um, porous materials like wood or paper. Um, it just makes this kind of like indestructible bond with things that are... Um, porous and it doesn't work you know it's good on um, plastic things like that but it works super super good on um, wood and paper those kind of things so I'm gonna give the MDF a real good generous coat of craft glue before I throw these guys on and also, these are exactly four by four inches, and then these little cutoffs are, you know, they're a little bit smaller. Um, they, uh, let's see, these, yeah, I mean, almost four, almost four inches by four inches. Some of them are a little more exact than um, than others. Uh, you can see this one, like, it's missing like a quarter of an inch total. So, but pretty close to four by four. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a heavy book and I'm going to plop it down on these to make sure that they dry flat before I start painting. Um, just because the you can see how on, on these guys the uh, that little bit of medium, the fine pumice gel in the uh, acrylic medium stuff, it, w it wants to, when it dries, it wants to curl up. A little bit it wants to curl this way so we want it to dry the other way and then the MDF with this on top of it should stay flat it because it might want to curl the same way again the MDF might want to curl in whoops curl in like this because it has that coat of tacky glue which is contracting and then there's nothing contracting on the other side so 
We'll see if it if it dries flat when it has a heavy book on it. But that's what this is about. That's why these are our test pieces, because we're experimenting. But they should dry flat if they have something heavy on top of them, forcing them to dry that way when the glue contracts. Because the glue is gonna want to pull the MDF with it and the foam core. The foam core is gonna want it. Can it go the same direction as the MDF? So while I'm waiting for those to uh, to dry, I <clears throat> so that they dry flat. I wanted to do another piece that had this kind of like brickwork look to it. So I did a little test piece. Originally I was planning to make a mold of just some brickwork and then cast it and then tile those out. And I was going to measure inch um, segments of this stuff. And this is just, um, I can't remember where I got this. This is just like, it's for Sculpey. It's a, a, a like kind of brickwork looking mold for Sculpey. But as you can see, it isn't exactly brickwork. So, but I found this on Thingiverse and it's just a little uh, a brick kind of stamp thing. And I resized it a little bit to make it inch um, grids uh, for the inch grid purists out there. <clears throat> It's really tough to get it in there and then press it in and get uh, nice looking bricks. But on this test piece, I did really like the way it came out. So I ended up doing another piece and then finishing it with the uh, pumice kind of um, stuff. And I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another one of these. I'm gonna show you how I made this. And then I'm gonna cast these up because I really like this texture, I really like the way that these um, these look. How the um, has that really kind of authentic looking stone uh, brick kind of texture. So I think if I cast these up, and these could be bases for minis too, I guess. But I'm gonna make more and then cast these up the next time I do a cast of something kind of flat. Uh, but I'll show you how I how I made those. So first off. I'm gonna start with a, a scrap piece of um, a foam core, and <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure that I have some room around the edges to really press in there and kind of crank on it, so that I get that nice uh, texture. So I'm just gonna push it in there really good, and you'll see what kind of texture this gives by itself, just pushing the stamp in there. So that's what it looks like without any, just just by pushing into it. So then I'm gonna go one step forward with that. And I'm gonna go in with the exact mode and uh, uh, cut into the, um, to the grooves to add some of that add some realism, add some depth to it first. a little bit. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Oops. That's what it looks like after we cut into it with the exacto. It's looking more like a brick texture. Now, and then, Through it through the sides with a ballpoint pen. And 
I mean, that looks really good. That's that's a really nice looking uh, brick texture. Let's if I can get it to focus. Really nice looking bricks. But then the last step, I'm just gonna come in with my uh, pumice gel, my pumice media gel, and paint over that. I'm gonna use a cheap brush. This is, oh uh, yeah, Craftsmark. I think these either come from like Walmart or like Hobby Lobby, someplace like that. They're just super cheap craft brushes. It's exactly what they're meant for is painting with like glue, not paint. And I am gonna get all the sides just because I don't want it to, to dry funny and kind of peel up. I just want it to dry once. Uh, I might go back in and add a little more um, of this pumice texture stuff, but mostly right now I'm just trying to seal it. Especially since we're going to cast it, I want to seal it extra good. So I'm going to go over it pretty generously with one coat of this stuff. And that'll, that'll add some texture, but it'll also just seal it. <clears throat> so these guys are done drying the um, you know just looking at them you can't tell that they worked just a tiny bit um i set a book on top of them for i don't know maybe an hour or something like that and but with wood glue um craft glue this kind of stuff uh really ideally you should leave it for 24 hours before you start doing anything else with it. Um, <clears throat> but you, it, it only bowed just a teeny tiny bit. So these guys look really good. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we'll start painting. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna start with an ink wash. Um, just using some, you know, just regular This is not this is not the same thing as a um, an acrylic wash like I don't know, Citadel like a, like an Abrax or a shade or like Null Oil or something like that. First of all, this is going to be way way cheaper. Um, <clears throat> you know, a big bottle of India ink will last you a really long time. And this is another reason why it's nice to work with the black foam core is because it, it's already black uh, or at least it's dark gray or, or neutral gray by the time um, the uh, <clears throat> the pumice medium stuff is dried on it and everything so if I were going to prime it I would probably prime it in some kind of a neutral gray and the, the reason why neutral grays are neutral is because they can go either way. I mean, either way, they can either go light or dark or hot or cold, meaning more red or blue tinted. Um, <clears throat> so, but we do want this to be dark um, because we're going to go dark to light. Uh, with the darkest parts being the darkest darks in the shadows. Um, just meaning that the sun is not going to be hitting the darkest parts of the pieces. We're going to create that kind of illusion of death by making our darkest spots darker than they need to be. 
Um, like if you were looking at this and you were looking at it with your naked eye, it wouldn't be that dark. But we're sort of forcing it farther back by making it a little darker with the ink wash. And also, um, the ink wash isn't going to dry as fast as a, an acrylic um, base coat would. And that's a good thing because I want to do some wet blending with this really simple palette. Um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of going on like a slate look. I wanted to have like a flagstone look, but uh, I was kind of inspired by um, slate colors. looking good. So I'm just going to make a really simple palette. I have some of this stuff. I have some golden uh, fluid acrylics. All that means is that it's just, it's a little bit more, uh, just like that, you know, squeezable. Not necessarily like liquid fluid. They, they do make those. Um, uh, this, so that, let's see, yeah, I'm using raw sienna, I'm using titanium buff, and uh, titanium buff is um, unbleached titanium. So titanium white is uh, is pretty commonly used. Um, titanium buff is a nice color for natural stone or flesh tones. Uh, it makes a nice base for. Um, natural kind of earthy tones. So I'm gonna water these down a lot. Way too much we'll try and get them like you want to sort of you you wanna geez I don't know how to explain it. You sort of like a a runny consistency where you can pull them out and make it lighter with the less, you don't want it opaque. You want it, um, uh, <clears throat> not opaque, just kind of like more runny than opaque. Definitely don't want to use pure paint, just kind of thinner like that. And then we're gonna mix some Get some, create some variation. First, I want to get these guys kind of runny liquid. When you're wet blending, you really want your pigments to be watered down so that they'll blend together. <laughs> okay, so we've got our ink wash. And now we're just gonna kind of go in and uh, put some light on the tops and then some dark on the bottoms and then blend them together. And we are, we are sort of creating an illusion of depth. Um, in other words, you want your lightest parts to be on the tops and you want your darkest darks to be in the crevices. So don't, um, don't let your, your lightest colors run into the recesses. But the ink wash is gonna help with that too. So I'm just kind of slopping it on and then not even really being too careful uh, Keep in mind that this is a base layer. Um, just gonna kind of go around and add some color to the black. Um, blending the colors together, wet blending colors, wet on wet. If you're coming from an oil painting background, you know you know the wet on wet. don't want your colors to dry. You want them to sort of just run into each other uh, and then blend them together at this stage. And then you're gonna go back later and kind of fix your, um, 
fix your painting, get, get more, um, more defined as you go, but at this stage it's still pretty abstract. We're gradually building up um, more and more layers of paint. So I'm kind of coming in, at first I'm coming in with the darker colors, and I'm just adding some, some tone, some general tone. I'm not going to do any dry brushing until I've wet blended everything. and then wet blend all the colors to get some general tone. <clears throat> An ink wash is pretty effective for coloring um, big pieces like this. Even though it dries a little bit gloss, um, Still, um, this is our base layer, and then we're gonna hit it with the dull coat to seal it later, anyways. Um, after we uh, flock it too, to keep the flock on, and or, or protect the flock too when you're using your minis and so on on it. Um, So it doesn't matter, and then the, also the paint, the, this acrylic paint is going to dry a little bit glossy too. So first we're going to seal it with a, a dull coat lacquer, which actually does dull down the glossiness. A good dull coat lacquer does, it seals and protects, but it also dulls the finish. So it'll make it less glossy. And then after that, we're gonna go in and do a little oil wash, which will dull it down even more. Oils are naturally dull. They're, they're naturally non-gloss. Um, Acrylics are naturally glossy. One of the things that you're paying for when you buy model paints is you're paying for um, non-glossy uh, paints. Unless you're buying like enamels and you want to like paint little model cars, things like that. One of the things that you're actually paying them for is to formulate nice non-glossy flesh tone or, or whatever and have a consistent color for when you're painting up your giant tabletop army. And really don't worry about being too exact at this point. We're just kind of adding some tone and then we're going to go in back after and, and dry brush some highlights and do oil washes and so on. And right at this point we're just getting some general kind of stone tone down, just putting some color down and then and just I'm blending it and mixing the palette on top of the piece. I mean mixing colors as I go. So I'll put down a little bit of color and then I'll mix it and get some coverage and then 
I am putting my lights on my um, my high parts, but I'm not being really exact. I'm just kind of mixing as I go. You know, one more thing about these paints. Um, don't go out and buy golden acrylics. Um, <laughs> they're kind of expensive. They're really good. These are really good acrylics. But if you're going to do a project like this and you're going to go out and buy a paint, get this stuff. This is Artist Loft. Um, I'm not sure. It's either like Walmart or, you know, Hobby Lobby, uh, Michaels, like that kind of brand. This stuff is dirt cheap and it's almost this just as good um but definitely save some money for terrain pieces because you're gonna end up using a lot of paint on stuff like this you know? and the golden's kind of expensive but the for for this it's gonna work the um artist loft stuff is gonna work just as good I'm not saying don't buy golden acrylics, but not for this. Got some general, general stone tone going on. Alright, so while we were doing that one, well, I guess I could do these two. Come back in on our um, our driest piece, and then do some uh, some highlights, some kind of drier, dry brush, sort of dry brush highlights. So I'm just going to come in with the, um, the unbleached titanium white, and do a few little highlights. This isn't the finished stage. We're still in the early stage. Just gonna add some, uh, some little highlights. I'm, I'm still, I'm still wet blending. I'm just, it's a little bit drier. I'm going to kind of control my, my highlights a little bit more. I use um, old clothes as rags <laughs> instead of paper towels. It's just a worn out pair of blue jeans. Also, I'm trying to come in and go where I have the really dark stones. They're on the surface, and then I'm lightening those up a lot because I don't want those to be dark. I want those to be lighter to create that force perspective, pushing the uh, the dark areas back further to make them look like holes, even though they're only like a couple little millimeters deep. It's starting to look a lot more stone like that. We're not even we're close to done. Do this one since it's dry a little bit. Get some of those highlights. Good enough for now. 
while these guys are drying. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna dry brush with um, pigments. Not actual paint, just some uh, some pen pastel. Um, straight up pigment. This is kind of how I like to uh, to dry brush. Um, I feel like dry brushing you waste a lot of paint and this just this just looks better and you get a better um, effect as far as dry brushing goes. <clears throat> just using some, some straight pigment and then you can kind of push it around and it really uh, it picks up those highlights See how that really breaks up the uh, the uniformity, the un uniformity, the same sameness. Uh, I'm sticking with that one. I like that one. Water down about 50 50 with water before I uh, put flock on it. And then I'm just going to go into the cracks on these guys. And then I'm going to take some flock and put it down. In those in those spots where I put the water down hours. Trying to just put it down where I think flock, like little plants, would like to live if they were if they lived in between these rocks. Not everywhere, just certain spots, and covering up my mistakes, things that places where I'm not quite happy with. These guys are looking good after um, <clears throat> after I flocked them, and you can see how the acrylic has dyed kind of glossy, or, or has dried. <laughs> the acrylic has dried kind of glossy, um, but after we hit it with the the dull coat, that's going to dull it down a lot. And also the um, the pan pastels kind of have a dulling effect too, um, but 
finished and the very last step when we put the whales on, that's going to dull it down a lot more as well. So before I do that, before I put um, some dull coat lacquer on, I'm going to do one last little bit of uh, dry brushing with some green pigments on the flock. And I'm just going to hit some of the tops of the flock with some green pigment to kind of uh, make some highlights on the flock itself before I seal it. Not everywhere, just a few little highlights. Just add one more little level of depth of realism. So these guys are looking good with the, um, <coughs> the dull coat on them. It definitely does dull down the gloss a little bit. One thing that I forgot is um, I wanted to do a little bit of dry brushing with some um, Deneb Stone. And this is the first time that I've actually used um, some uh, model paints. And they're just, they're way more expensive. Um, for, you know, for terrain, you just, you don't need to use the expensive stuff. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing, bring out some of the texture of the, the highlights on the, on the stone, just in a few, few little places um, to uh, <clears throat> make the, uh, the highlights kind of pop a little bit. So I just hit them with uh, another little spray of um, <clears throat> dull coat lacquer. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a little oil wash. Um, don't buy these paints. These are crap. I just, I have these. Um, don't buy them. <laughs> they are, they're supposed to be water soluble mix or water mixable oil colors. There's no such thing. Don't buy them. Um, so. I'm just gonna use a little tiny bit and then we're gonna make a nice thin wash out of that. And you can use any kind of oilless mineral spirits. I just like this stuff, Gamsol. It's made by Gamblin. It's their version of, um, geez, I don't know. Their version of uh, oilless mineral spirits. crappy brush for this too but you want to just water these down really really thin and uh, don't be scared of oil paints a lot of people are scared of oil paints just nothing to be scared of they're just like regular paints they just dry a lot slower and because the binder is linseed oil um, they do dry a lot less gloss they dry a lot um, thinner but this is going to um, <clears throat> really tie everything together. It's going to tone down the highlights. And, um, oh, and also, I'm going to make a, another wash, too. An olive green wash for the, um, for the, the lichen. And then that's going to help it sell it, too. I had to buy these for a class or something, and I still haven't used all of them up. I bought way better paints. These are just junk, but they're good for training. I'm just giving all of the rocks a wash with this uh, burnt umber. Yeah, burnt umber. And it's just going to tie everything together and really sell that that last level of uh, 
realism, because that's what we're going for. We want to get us some realism. And the nice thing about oil paints is that they never dry, right? It takes them forever to dry. So you can just dab away in the areas where you want to leave your highlights. See how that wash just really builds down these colors and um, helps just uh, sell the, the paint job, the final paint job. And another thing that's important is um, you can paint oils on top of acrylics. You cannot paint acrylics on top of oils. It has like an oil slick effect, and the, the acrylics will sort of break up and. Crack, the plastic will crack once it dries on top of the, uh, the oil binder. But it's going to flow into all those cracks and make our locks, rocks look a lot more earthy. And then I'm going to do some of the, uh, the olive green on the um, the lichen. It's going to deepen the, the dark colors, uh, kind of sell the, the contrast because it, it pushes the, um, the, the pushes the colors a little bit darker and pushes the, um, the dark recesses further back. That's looking really good. It really helps to sell the, the stone texture. Make sure that you do seal the acrylics before you do this part so that the acrylics don't turn into um, watercolors. That's it. Oh, we'll put a little more the olive green on these plants. All right, so these guys are dry, um, and you can see the the oils dried completely uh, matte on there. And um, there's a few little glossy places. Um, the ink. Is, is naturally glossy. The uh, the acrylics are kind of naturally glossy, but you could cover up those parts with um, flock or um, kind of go over them again with some some model paints like uh, um, Tamiya or Citadel. That stuff would dry and flat. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks looks really good. Really realistic looking uh, stone. <clears throat> Thanks for watching.